Biden gave a speech at the uh, NATO press conference, and this is a speech that a lot of people were watching with a lot of attention because Democrats were hoping Biden would be able to put some of the uh, questions about him following the debate with former President Trump, kind of put the concerns to bed, whereas Republicans were hoping it would be more of the same for Biden, and well, I think it may actually be a mix of both. And I'm going to go over just this article by Axios that I think does a pretty good job kind of breaking down the event. And then I'll give my own like analysis at the end of what I think happens from this and what kind of this all means. So first things first, uh, Biden gave a news conference yesterday. And he the main purpose of this press conference, while it was focused on NATO and uh, kind of the importance of NATO in the world today... This press conference comes at a time where Biden's facing a lot of questions and concerns about his fitness to be president of the United States and to go up against Donald Trump in November to be president for another four years. So this press conference is kind of seen as a potential like make or break for Biden. Can he do the job and can he defeat Trump? Because those are the main concerns that a lot of Democrats and even Democratic-leaning uh, independents have is can Biden convey the message to go against Trump? And I'm not going to lie, early on in the press conference, like a minute or two in, I thought Biden came out of the gate sounding a little bit more like enthusiastic, a little bit more on message and like measured. Like I thought he actually sounded good for the first like two minutes or so. But then unfortunately for Biden, it became more the same where he started slurring his words, losing his train of thought, stumbling, like looking confused and dazed, more of the same that we saw in the debate. But I'm not even sure if that is going to hurt Biden too much because that's kind of what Biden is known for now. But the main takeaway was that on policy, Biden actually, I think, stayed on policy for what he tried to do relatively pretty well throughout the press conference. Again, I mentioned he had moments of where he would try to explain something or tell a story about something and he would like slur his words or stumble or lose his train of thought and you can go through the speech itself and count the times Biden says anyway, like throws his hands up and goes anyway, and then moves on. I mean, I counted over 20 times Biden did that during the speech. So Biden definitely had trouble like keeping on like on track when he was trying to explain something, but it was honestly an improvement over his debate. But why did, so why does this press conference yesterday, why does it really matter? Because there were a few notable gaffes that happened during the press conference or during the uh, press conference and before it too that I'll be getting to. But just in general, why does it matter? It matters because Biden's political support has been absolutely cratering since his disastrous debate against President Trump. And so, and I'll be doing another article after this where there are a lot of Democratic representatives now openly talking about for Biden to resign and that Biden's not fit to do the job anymore. And for instance, after the press conference, Rep. Jim Himes from uh, Connecticut, who is a ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, joined more than half a dozen House Democrats who have called on Biden to withdraw from the race. So, regard whatever your opinion is of President Biden, when you have members of your own party openly saying you should not be the nominee and that you're not fit to do it, that's not a good thing. Even if you support Biden, which I understand being defensive about this, if you do support Biden, this is not a good thing to be happening for him. But Biden thus far, and again, things can always change because politics, things change very, very quickly. Biden has remained adamant so far that he is going to stay in this race and he is the best person to defeat Donald Trump. Those are Biden's own words. But Biden did concede during the speech that he would only reconsider his decision to stay in the race if his staff showed him enough evidence that he could not win or even if he was shown data that showed Vice President Harris fared better at beating Trump. So this is very interesting, because I believe this is the first time Biden has said something like this, where he would even consider leaving the race if he believed he could not win. I still, I'm still of the mind that I don't think Biden's going to drop out. I think Biden will be the nominee in November. And, and as I've done in my previous videos, if you watch them, you know, I think right now Trump is on track to defeat Joe Biden. It'll probably be more similar to 2016 where Trump wins a state like Wisconsin by like under 2%. Like, it'll still be very close nationwide. But I do think Trump is on track 
to win Biden and potentially in a very big electoral college victory, but statewide relatively close. But to give some good news from Biden, because Biden desperately needs them, Biden did talk for a while about his foreign policy uh, stances and issues and such, and he actually shared a pretty good recollection of what he was trying to say and what he was trying to do. Now, I'm not a fact checker, so I'm not sure if everything he said was 100% true. I would probably bet that like, at least half of it was probably false, but you can also do the same for Trump or probably half the things he says he's kind of exaggerating as well. Biden, I think, is the same way, but at very least, he was able to put a coherent message together when it comes to what he was trying to explain about foreign policy. But then things kind of started to fizzle out for Biden because Biden's press conference, as I mentioned, he had trouble kind of staying on message when it came to slurring his words and explaining things. But overall, I think he did decent enough where if the press conference just ended there, that could have been the main story. Like, he didn't do terrible. He didn't do great. He kind of did, like, okay. And honestly, right now, that's all Biden needs. Biden called himself the best, he's best qualified to govern. And Biden also commented on foreign policy from Gaza to Ukraine and China. And he mentioned reproductive rights. Control guns, not girls was a very notable catchphrase that Biden came out of this press conference. So Biden actually, from that standpoint, did a pretty good job at getting his message across. Even though it was kind of hard to understand at times, and it definitely was. Policy-wise, I think Biden made his stances pretty clear during the press conference. Which, for Biden, is good news. However, it wouldn't be Biden without a major gaffe or two. The first question that Biden got after the press conference during the question and answer period from reporters, the first question he got was, is Pre- Vice President Harris like fit to be president of the United States? And Biden, this is Biden's probably biggest gaffe that he's made, says, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president if I didn't think that she was qualified. So Biden obviously was referring to Vice President Kamala Harris, but got her name mixed up with Donald Trump's. And of course, this has become a massive, massive meme all throughout social media now. Trump has even posted uh, like videos and photos of his face over Vice President Harris's as Trump as Biden's VP, Biden Trump uh, 2024. Images have been going around Twitter as well, so making fun of the president. It's it's not good for Biden. It's again if the press conference ended before the question and answer period even happened, Biden probably walks away from this saying like, well, he sounded a little bit confused, but. I think where he stood on the policies was very clear. And this time around, with that gaffe, it's it's not good for Biden. However, that somehow might not have been the worst gaffe of the day. Because before the press conference, President Biden was introducing Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and accidentally called him President Putin. But now, Biden quickly recognized that he did this and made a mistake, and he kind of brushed it off as saying, oh, he has Putin on his mind a lot, and that the U.S. needs to beat Putin. But, I mean, that just being a media clip, that's gone all over social media and the news media as well. That's definitely not the best look for Biden. And this comes at times as Biden is facing a lot of calls to drop out and concern from longtime allies of his. For instance, actor George Clooney, who held a record-breaking Biden fundraiser for him in June, did did an op-ed in the New York Times calling for Biden to step down basically saying that he's not the best equipped Democrat to take on Donald Trump in November. And I kind of think that's going to be the main art, main argument coming out of this article. That's pretty much what the article covers, by the way. So I'm just going to be kind of giving my own analysis and thoughts on this now because I, I tried to stay on message of what the news conference was itself during all that, and now I'm just going to give my opinion quickly. I think there's going to be kind of three sides here. There are the Democrats who are loyal and supportive of Biden and will stand by Biden no matter what. Then you have the Democrats who maybe like Biden, maybe don't like Biden, but are concerned he's not the best Democrat to take on Trump. And then basically you have everyone else, such as uh, Republicans and independents who are going to support Trump, who are going to go after Biden and any Democrat regardless, but definitely go after Biden saying he's not fit to be president of the United States. 
the Democrats who are supporting Biden are going to pivot from this and say, yes, but Biden knows more about policy and Biden tells the truth more and that these policies will do this and this. With respect, I understand the messaging, but most people in America like that don't follow politics don't have time to sit down and watch the news and listen in depth about policy, about policies and politics too much. They really only see the same news clips that we all see throughout the news and social media and such. So you really can't expect most Americans to sit down and read all like the bills that are going on in Washington. So if the pro-Biden Democrats plan is to win this election because Biden's policies are better than Trump's, I'm not sure how successful that's going to be because I don't think most Americans have the time or frankly care enough to really take that attention and be like, oh, well, Biden's stance on pick any random issue is better than Trump's. So I'm going to vote for Biden for that reason. If you think that way, you're probably already supporting your preferred candidate anyway. I don't think many people are going to become policy wonks in the next few weeks and choose their candidate that way. A lot of it, I think, is going to come down to which person is more mentally and physically fit to be president of the United States. That's where I think the Democrats in between kind of come, where maybe they think they have a good chance of beating Trump if they put up a Democrat who's maybe a little bit younger and mentally sharper that can convey their policy message the same as Biden would, but also convey more enthusiasm and energy and show that they're better and more fit to be president than Trump and Biden. And I think that may be the Democrats' best bet at this point. I don't think Biden has the ability to win the election right now. I just, I really don't. I think Biden, again, I'm not even arguing the policy standpoint, because personally, I don't think it matters much. But I don't think Biden has the physical and mental ability to keep up with Trump at this point. I think the debate kind of proved that. And if they do a second debate, I imagine that will it will prove it then as well. But... That's going to go up against the support of Trump, who I think Trump's support is pretty much ingrained at this point. Everyone who's supporting Trump is going to vote for him no matter what in November. The question is for the Democrats, do they have enough support to kind of overtake Trump's support in November? And that's where the difference between having Biden or another Democrat could make the difference. So that was the news press, uh, news press conference from NATO. And these are the Democrats, as of when I'm recording this video, are the latest to call on Biden to drop out. So there have been a bunch of House of Representative members who have officially said for Biden to drop out. I don't know many of these names, to be honest. These aren't exactly like the biggest high-profile names. But nonetheless, if you, I'm going to stop here for a second. If you want to read them quickly, you can. I've really not heard too many of these. I'm from Massachusetts, so I've heard of Seth Moulton. But other than that, I really haven't heard from too many of these Democrats. But what I have heard, though, is, for instance... George Clooney, I've heard of him. Ex-Representative Tim Ryan, I've heard of him. Julian Castro and Marion Williamson, who is not surprised Williamson said that because she's um, Biden's opponent. But then the only senator so far to call for Biden to drop out is Peter Welch from Vermont, who just got elected in 2022. He was a longtime congressman who just became senator when Pat Leahy retired. So even when it comes to senators, there really isn't too many notable names. However, where this article gets a little bit more kind of interesting is what do the top Democrats think? What does Nancy Pelosi, H Hakeem Jeffries, Chuck Schumer think? It's interesting. They've all, to a degree, showed support for Biden, whereas at the same time, they've kind of said that there are some questions and, concerned, and concerns, but they have shown support for Biden. So this is kind of the tough place like a lot of Democrats are in, where... They're saying publicly that they support Biden, but privately they see the same thing that every other American sees, which is his mental and physical ability to do this is an, a definite question mark. They're not arguing whether he can talk policy or what his policies would be. They're not arguing that. They're arguing, is he physically and mentally fit to do the job? And that's what I think a lot of concerns Democrats are saying. And this is also coming up, this is becoming more in electoral politics and election politics. You have senators in Montana like John Tester and Ohio with Sherrod Brown who are two Democrats up for re-election this year and states that Trump is probably going to win by over 50 in points in both. And they have to try and win on the same time, being on the same ballot, as Biden. And they're definitely going to outperform Biden, no question. But is Biden being on the ticket enough to actually hurt them and potentially cost their election? So 
that's something to keep an eye on. Does Biden is openly embracing Biden in the case of Tester and Brown hurt their chances of winning? Probably it does. So they're trying to distance themselves. But as we saw in 2014, that doesn't always work. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. So it'll be interesting to see how this kind of plays off if these two senators lose their seats and Biden also lose the election. It'll be interesting to see just what the numbers show between how Biden did versus how they did. Patty Murray of Washington State said... Uh, Mr. Biden must do more to demonstrate that he can compete, he can campaign strong enough to beat Donald Trump. Michael Bennett of Colorado warned that Mr. Trump was on track to win by a landslide and take with him the Senate and House, kind of talking about the same thing I mentioned with Biden hurting down ballot uh, races. Adam Schiff running for Senate in California, Jamie Raskin in Maryland, and Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey have also publicly aired their doubts about Biden since the June 27 debate. So Democrats are really in a tough spot right now where they're trying to figure this out. Can Biden do it? The calls for Biden to drop out have gotten louder and louder. There have been more people. It's definitely, I don't know if it's a a majority of the Democratic Party have not called for Biden to drop out, but I would definitely bet a majority of the Democratic Party are at least having private doubts that Biden can actually do this. And that debate was a big reason why. It's the, I think the Democrats are in this point where they think a younger Democrat with more energy and stamina would be able to convey the message the same as Biden, if not better, and being able to show they're fit to be president. Biden, I don't think, can do that at this time. And that's something I think we'll see more of in the coming days is, does Biden actually consider dropping out? Again, I still think Biden stays in, but definitely something to keep an eye on. There's also comes out that for fundraising reports for the second quarter, this I believe June is a part of this, where Trump actually outpaced Biden, I think for the first time ever in a very long time, that Trump was able to outpace Biden with $331 million, where Biden's campaign got $264 million. And it's kind of, it's not a good sign when a Democrat is getting beaten in fund, fundraising by a Republican. That's usually never good. But 331 to 264 that's definitely not good for Biden either. And you can make an argument if Kamala Harris is the nominee, Perhaps she's not getting beaten this much in the fundraising numbers by Trump. She may even be beating Trump in the fundraising numbers. So definitely not a good sign for Biden. And now, a poll by PBS I thought was interesting that a majority of Americans don't want Biden as a Democratic candidate, but he also hasn't lost ground to Trump too much in the poll. The poll's margin of error is about 3.8%, so 50 to 48 advantage Biden within the margin of error, so the race is essentially tied. But there's a chart down here I kind of want to show that in this poll, which, again, technically had Biden winning by two points, even though it's in the margin of error, Biden was up by two points. Americans who think Biden and Trump don't have the mental fitness to be president. 64%, a majority of people, think Biden does not is not mentally fit to be president of the United States. While at the same time, Trump has 49%. But Biden winning this poll, a majority of people still think he's not fit to be president, which, again... I think is the big concern for Democrats is if they could find someone that's younger and more mentally fit, or at least appears more mentally fit, they may put a lot of those concerns about Biden to bed and gives the Democrats a better shot at defeating Trump. And that's something I think a lot of Democrats in Washington are starting to realize now. And now how would Biden or how would other Democrats do, for instance, if Biden were to step aside? And technically, they either do about the same or a little bit worse. For instance, Harris versus Trump, she wins 50-49, so Trump's support actually goes up one, but Harris's support stays the same. Newsom versus Trump, he does the same as Biden would, and Whitmer versus Trump, they're actually tied. So, it's not really too much to take away from this, other than the Democrats are kind of in this solid place where they can't go up too much more than they already have in this poll, but at very least... There's, I think, a little bit more of, like, an enthusiasm, like, support if it's not Biden, if it's a younger Democrat, like one of these three. I think it would make Democrats feel a little bit better that they can do the job and kind of, like, have more energy and do more events that Biden just can't do, given his current state. And lastly, this is just an interesting breakdown I saw. For president, which trait is more concerning? Someone who doesn't tell the truth, Democrats care about that way more than Republicans, or independents do as well, but definitely care about that way more than Republicans and independents. Republicans care about someone who's more fit and not too old to be president. 
and independents care, I would say, a decent amount about someone who might be too old to serve, but definitely care more about someone who doesn't tell the truth. This is why I think Democrats' top defense for Biden has been that he's better on policies and issues than Trump's, but a lot of Republicans and a lot of independents don't care about that. And it's all become a question of which has a bigger group of support. People who care about whether the president's old enough and fit enough to be president or people who want the certain policies that they want. And that's going to become the divide in the election, I think. And that's kind of it for the article right now. The last thing I just want to mention is that even though Biden's winning in this poll, 62% of adults aged 18 to 29 says Trump has the most likely chance to win the election, whereas 55% of adults aged 60 or older think Trump's going to win. So, and 39% of Americans believe of overall that Biden will win the White House. So Biden, even in polls where he's winning, is not favored to win, which is definitely not good. Lastly, to wrap the video, I just want to go over a recent chart I was looking at in 538, where they've done simulations of the election and show it's 51-49 where Trump wins over Biden, but it's so close, it could really go either way. And I think if you're a Democrat, this is where you're questioning whether or not Biden can do it, because this election between Trump and Biden is so close Maybe they think if they have a different Democrat, the chances of winning goes much up and the fears of being too old go away that the Democrats may have a shot. And I just want to show you, the this map is actually interesting as well, how the forecast changed over time. Obviously, Biden was doing well a few months ago, and now it's flipped, and now it's very, very close, but Trump has taken a narrow lead. But who's favored to win each state? Again, these are the same states I've been talking about, I've been going over. Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, these states are going to decide who the president of the United States is in the fall. Pennsylvania, in their simulations, Biden is up 51-49, meaning that of 100 simulations, Biden won it 51 times, dead heat. Michigan, 58-42, a little bit better for Biden, but again, dead heat. Wisconsin, 53-47, again, same thing, a little bit better for Biden, but dead heat. The Democrat really has to win all three of these states to pretty much ensure Trump won't win. And I think Democrats have to ask if Biden can do this. If Biden can win all three of these states, then Biden's got a good shot at winning and he'll be the president again for four more years. If they can't, that's where the question comes in of maybe can another Democrat like Gretchen Whitmer or Gavin Newsom or Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania, can they win these three states and basically keep Trump from being president again? I just thought it was something interesting that they kind of need to ask about and they need to figure out. So for Democrats, it was a very mixed day for Biden yesterday. It's I don't think it's as bad as a lot in the media will say it is, but I don't think it's necessarily as good as a lot of like Biden supporters will say. I think yesterday was kind of a day where Biden needed like a slam dunk to show everyone that like he can do the job. And he didn't get a slam dunk, but he might have got a free throw. Where he's still not doing great, but at least got a point out of it. And I think if you're gonna if you're gonna be supporting Biden, you can kind of watch the press conference and see a few things from there that you like that you took away. If you don't like Biden and you're concerned about him, then you'll look at the major gaps and be like, "Yeah, that's more of the same." So I think it's kind of what you make of it for yesterday's press conference. But Biden's definitely kind of in a very interesting spot to see where he goes forward if he'll stay in the race or drop out. I still think he's going to stay in the race, but of course we'll find out in the coming days and weeks. So that will do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel so you can watch future videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in a future video.